What's shaking booktube? My name's Cam and welcome back to another video. Today I'm doing something I haven't done in quite a while, in quite in quite a long while. It's book haul time. Oh yeah. It's book haul time, it's book haul time, it's book haul time, it's book haul time, it's book haul. I wanna tell you a really quick story, so just bear with me for a moment. The other day I was wandering through the city before I started work as I normally do, marveling at all of the tall buildings, the interesting looking people basking in the ethnic cocktail of odors from all of the surrounding restaurants. Really just having the time of my life when, by chance, I happened to stumble across an unusual looking storefront. There were no signs or anything like that, there was almost no indication as to what type of store this actually was, except for in the window. I could see stacks and stacks of ancient looking books, piled almost as high as the ceiling itself. Naturally, I was intrigued, so I walked inside. The bell gave its little welcoming jingle jangle to let the store owner know that there was someone there for what appeared to be the first time in a thousand years, and I noticed something strange. None of the books had any titles, but before I had the chance to actually open one and have a look, a voice called to me from the back of the store. Casting a glance behind one of the towers of dust and paper and cloth, I found a little old man sitting on a chair staring directly at me. He looked almost as old as the books himself. He looked equally mysterious and wise, every inch of his face shadowed with the wrinkle of time. And then he looked me directly in the eyes, and he said, Hey, what's up, man? You finna buy some books? Now, obviously, none of that is actually true, although that day I was finna buy some books, and that I did. First, I'm gonna have to show you something. Just one second. Haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just joking around. Unless... <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm kidding. So this right, her, is the books that I purchased the other day, or at least most of them are. A couple of them were acquired in other ways, but I still want to tell you about them. I just want to clarify, if you think me not buying a lot of books within the last year or so is some kind of uh, statement about the folly of consumerism, it is not. <laughs> the reason why is because these three books right here, just these three, cost me $80. That's almost as much as I spend on like a week or two of groceries. That's completely unrelated, but that's almost eight servings of buffalo wings. And I'm talking about the good buffalo wings too, not that 7-Eleven buffalo wing shit. Anyway, the first book I want to get out of the way is... Dark Dawn. As I'm sure you're already aware by now, it's a, it's a pretty big series on BookTube. Dark Dawn is the third and final book in the Nevernight series. I'm pretty excited to get to it. I've done a whole review on the Nevernight series so far. I'll leave a card for that video if you want to check that out, but it's, it's really enjoyable. To dot point it without spoilers, the story centers around a young woman named Mia Corvere. She is a very gifted assassin with a very mysterious and dangerous a league of assassins called the Red Church. She's on a quest for vengeance while trying to harness her powers that allow her to manipulate Shadow, along with a bunch of interesting companions and a lot of blood and sexy, sexy sex. It's just a pretty fun ride, although, although it falls into almost every fantasy trope you can imagine, and although I think there is an argument to be made about it kind of being a YA series, which I, I spoke about in that other video I mentioned, I do think it's a pretty phenomenal story. And next up we have Good Omens. There were like five different editions of Good Omens there, including a script version, but I definitely liked this cover the best. It's another pretty popular book, and I'm sure you're already aware that there is a massively popular Amazon Prime TV series behind this, starring one of my all-time favorite actors, David Tennant, who is the best doctor. And you can fucking fight me on that. I'm sorry. So I haven't seen the show, but from what I understand, it is about a demon and an angel teaming up to stop the end of the world, the apocalypse. The rapture, which is to be brought on by the son of the devil, I believe. Any case I can make for reading the book, I would actually refer to watching the trailer for the TV show because that is what made me want to read the book. The show looks amazing. But I did make the decision that I don't want to watch the show until I read the book, so here we are. I think it's also suggested that there is a romantic relationship between the angel and the demon, which I imagine has every Catholic's butt cheeks clenched. <laughs> and as if I even need the same more, the authors involved are Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, so there is plenty of reason to check this one out, as far as I can see. How fucking awesome were Choose Your Own Adventure books? Now, now you know where this is going. 
It's a choose your own adventure book, all right? It's called Can You Survive the Zombie Apocalypse by Max Brelia. To the best of my knowledge, it's not like a kid's book or a middle grade book. It's actually for adults, but it is a comedic spin on the zombie apocalypse. And even better than that, it is a choose your own adventure, which as far as books go, I think is one of the biggest disappointments I've ever had as a reader is that the popularity of choose your own adventures didn't carry out through to adult books as much as I would have liked. I think the untapped potential of Choose Your Own Adventures is it's almost a whole different format of storytelling. It's just absolutely fantastic and there's so much potential there to do something really unique with almost every story you can imagine. And of course it would be extremely daunting for writers because it's, I mean, you have to pretty much construct a web of story in which it can branch off in different ways with different endings, all the while still trying to write a genuine story that is true and pleases the reader. I know there are adult choose your own adventures out there, I just wish they were more popular, I wish they were more accessible. And if I'm being honest, I've considered writing one from time to time. I have a pretty perfect story that I think could only be told in the format of a choose your own adventure, but obviously, like I said, the planning of it is super daunting, so I just want to I want to finish the books I'm I'm currently writing first. I also really love the cover of this book and that includes the back as well. It kind of feels like this comic crossed with video game poster and it, it just, it, I think it perfectly encapsulates the idea of a comedic choose your own adventure zombie story. That's going to be one of the first books I jump into out of this stack so you can rest assured there'll be a video talking about it and to be honest probably going into a much deeper conversation about choose your own adventures and the worth and the merit of them. So those three I just showed you there, that's apparently $80 worth of paper. And the next one I'm going to show you is Nosferatu by my favorite author, Joe Hill. Every single toe, finger, and probably every other appendage on my body mm -hmm. is crossed in anticipation for Joe Hill's uh, book of short stories coming out later this year in collaboration with Stephen King, his father, Full Throttle. I am extremely excited for that one. In fact, I think it might be the only book I've ever actually requested an advanced reader copy of. And I got rejected. <laughs> the joke's on them because I'm still going to spend my money on it. Anyway, Nosferatu is, to my understanding, actually a TV show now. Like I mentioned before, I don't like watching the shows before reading the books though, but the best thing about this one is that I didn't buy it. In fact, it was given to me by my good friend and all around amazing and beautiful booktuber, Natasha from My Reading Is Odd. She even got it signed by the man himself. She didn't ask for anything in return. She didn't expect that I would be including this in a video or anything like that, but I really do think you should check out her channel if you haven't already because I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you to do it. So do it. A anyway, the story, much like all of Joe Hill's other stories and books, it's, it's a bit twisted and it's a bit confusing to try and understand just from reading the synopsis and then telling you what it says. So I might read it out for you. Victoria Vic McQueen has an uncanny knack for finding things. When she rides her bicycle over the rickety bridge in the woods near her house, she always emerges in the places that she needs to be. Vic doesn't tell anyone about her unusual ability. Charles Talon Manx has a gift of his own. He likes to take children for rides in his 1938 Rolls-Royce Wraith with the vanity plate NOS4A2. Nosferatu. In the Wraith, he and his innocent guests can slip out of the everyday world to an astonishing playground of amusements that he calls Christmasland. Mile by mile, the journey across the highway of Charlie's twisted imagination transforms his precious passengers leaving them as terrifying and unstoppable as their benefactor. And then comes the day when Vic goes looking for trouble, and finds her way inevitably to Charlie. Now the only kid ever to escape Charlie's twisted imagination is all grown up and desperate to forget. But Charlie Manx hasn't stopped thinking about Vic McQueen. On the road, he won't slow down until he's taken his revenge. Boom! The last book I want to show you today is probably the fifth or sixth copy of this book that I've owned because it is one of my all-time favorites, but also for a very special reason, and this one is A Monster Calls, a special edition. A Monster Calls is one of the most fantastic stories I've ever read about a boy dealing with grief and dealing with the guilt of emotions that most people don't talk about when you are dealing with grief, and he manifests this monster that seems vicious and seems dangerous but actually ends up helping him through this journey of self-discovery. And whether the monster's real or not is up for conversation. That's one of the interesting points of the story that were left 
open to interpretation. It's also a really fantastic, fantastic movie. And the thing with this copy of the book that I have is that it includes the story with illustrations. And it also includes a lot of behind the scenes information about the movie being made. It includes interviews with Liam Neeson, who did the voice of the monster, Sigourney Weaver, a bunch of the other actors. Really, it just gives you a more thorough insight into the movie and the story itself, because there's so much interesting information tied up with this story. In fact, the guy who wrote it, Patrick Ness, in a way, he actually ghost wrote it because the idea of the story itself was thought up by a completely different person who sadly passed away before it could be completed. That person was Siobhan Dowd, another well-known and well-respected British author. Anyway, that's it. That's, uh, that's, that's the book haul. It's no longer book haul time. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next year for my next, my next book haul after I manage to save up another $80. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Catch ya. She's got class and style, sweet knowledge by the pound, yeah. Baby, never act wild, very low key on the profile. Catching feelings is and all, let me show you how it goes. Love's the word, spins the verb.